Okay, so we've opened our generic model adaptive. We've placed a series of three points on the base plane here, and we've selected that we'd like each one of them to be an adaptive point by saying make adaptive by clicking on each one. And then we've gone through and we've selected two at a time, holding down control and done a spline through points to make a line between them on each side. The next thing we want to do is we're going to select that outline and we should be able to get the entire outline. If you come at it from the middle here, uh, you see that it lights up in blue and we can select that. We should have the whole outline selected and we can say is reference line over here. So the difference between checking this and not checking it is that if we're checking it, we're saying that this is not a built geometry, right? That line is not actually part of our building. It's just a reference line for other geometry to use to reference. So, so um, guys, this is Alex. She's in the DESCOMP program, um, just like me. And, and so we're just kind of here today to talk to you guys a little about adaptive components and help you guys out. So if you have any questions, still go ahead and uh, go ahead and let us know. So. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to add a little depth to this panel, right? We don't want every panel we have to be flat. Um, every, we don't want to limit ourselves to that plane, that our initial base plane, right? But how can we create a geometry that references this geometry and moves with this geometry, um, but is not planar with this, with this uh, particular face? So what we're going to do is we're going to create another series of points that are going to be offset from our base points. And we're going to do that by clicking the set plane icon again, the top left. We're going to click on just one. I'll start with my first point. Just that flat plane. Here, I'll do it again so you guys can see it. Just this flat plane that's associated with that first point. Does everybody see what I'm clicking on here? All right. So now if I go back and I say place a point, you can see that it highlights that plane that I've selected a little bit bigger than you know, it was the first time. So we can place that point back at the same location as our other adaptive point. And you can see when I hover over, I can click on it now. And so it's located in the same position as the original adaptive point, but it is hosted to that flat plane that, um, that, the other, that is part of the original adaptive point. Okay. So once you've got that place, go ahead and select it like I have it selected here. If you can't get it, you might have to press the tab button to get it. So then, whoop, I'll have to plug this in. Um, so now you'll see that when you have it selected, there's an offset uh, parameter here on the properties window. If you can't see your properties window, um, let us know and we can help you find that. But in that offset window or in the offset parameter, we can then type in a value and we can watch what happens to our point. So I'm just going to type in 10 feet, press apply, and you see that now our point is hovering off of our panel. Is everybody able to, to get that? Okay, so once you've got a point hovering off our panel, let's look at how we can create a parameter con to control how far that point hovers off our panel. So we have a parameter already associated with, with the actual point object here. But we want to create a parameter for our entire family that's going to be able to control that. So I'm going to come up here and click on this family types icon, which is in the little properties tab under the modify tab or in the properties window under the modify tab here. This one here, bottom right of the properties box. <clears throat> and once we click on that, we'll get this family types window that pops up here, right? Yours might look a little different than mine. I'm pretty sure all the 2017 ones look like this now. But you'll see this little new parameter icon in the bottom left corner of it. If you can find that, go ahead and click on that one there. All right. So um, now we're going to create a new parameter. We're going to store a value in this that we're going to use then to control that, that uh, offset value for our points, right? So I'm just going to call this one offset. I'm going to spell it uh, with a capital... O offset. And we're going to keep this one a type parameter. And type parameter allows the, um, the panel, the parameter that we're making to affect all of the objects of that type the same. And what I mean by that is if we set this to one foot of offset, that means that every one of our panels is going to get one foot of offset and they always all get the same thing. Versus if we had, for example, in our louver setup where we were controlling it based on the sun, in that case, we want every panel to be able to rotate differently. 
And because we want them to all be different values for that parameter, we can set that as an instance parameter, meaning every instance of our panel, every time the panel is created, it can have a different parameter. But this one's a type because we want the, every one that's the same type to have the same value. All right, so this one's going to be an offset, and we're going to keep this as a length as a type of parameter. So pretty much the only thing you need to change is the name. We'll say OK. And then we can type in a value here just to make sure it's working. I'm going to double what I had in there before. I'll say 20 feet. And of course, this is probably going to have to be scaled down once we apply it to a building because we're not going to have panels quite this big. Or maybe you would. I don't know. It depends. So I'm going to say 20 feet. I'll say apply. OK. All right. So now we've created this parameter, but it's not connected to any, any actual geometry, right? So how do we go back then and add it into the geometry? We can start off and click on that point again, go back to its offset parameter here, and click on our new offset variable. So what I've done here is I've just clicked on the little box to the right of our offset parameter in the properties window. And that brings up a list of parameters that can be applied to this type of, um, or parameters that can be applied to this type of parameter, right? So our offset parameter is a length parameter. Whoa, okay, I gotta plug this in. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and say okay. And when you do that, you should see that point move. All right, give me one second here. Plug in the computer and then we we'll keep going. If anybody's got any questions? Let us know. I know we. Moving a little bit quick. So once we've got this point controlled by our offset parameter, we're going to go around and do that to all all the other points, right? We're going to set our plane to that flat plane associated with our adaptive point. We're going to place a point at the same location as the adaptive point. And I'm going to just repeat that process for our other two adaptive points. Select the flat plane, place the point. All right, I'll go back, I'll click on the point. And I'll set its offset or associate its offset parameter with the offset parameter we made. Same thing we just did, but with two more points. All right, so we should have three points offset from our original plane. All right, once you got that, let me know if I'm going too fast. Once you got that, we're going to do the same thing we did before. And we're going to hold down control, select two of them, create a spline through points, and just rinse and repeat here. You get our full, our full profile again on this offset level. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing with that that we did on the original plane, and I'm going to select that that full outline, the full triangle, and then just say is reference line. So now you'll see that that's another green triangle. So just to test that this is still working, everybody should do this because you don't want it to happen later. Um, select one of your adaptive points and just drag it around. And you should see that that new geometry we've created moves with it and always stays offset from it and off or slightly off the face of it. That's hard to see on the projector, so. Didn't do it? Okay, so if it didn't do it, then uh, it probably didn't snap to, um, when you set that flat plane, it probably didn't snap to the, the point. All right, so once we've got our face offset here, now we've got a little bit of dimensionality to our panel, right? Not just a flat panel anymore. So what I want to do here is I'm going to place another series of points at the midpoint, and it should snap by itself, at the midpoint of each of these sides. 
There we go. Mine doesn't have the uh, second set of lines, just the points. Okay. If you're missing those lines, then go ahead and just select two points at a time on the offset set and just do your spline through points the whole way around. <clears throat> All right. So I've just placed those three. I've placed those three midpoints. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of the select one of the midpoints, and I'm going to select the opposite vertex, right? So I'm going to hit Control. So for example here, I'm taking the midpoint of this line here, and I'm taking the opposite vertex of that midpoint. And I'll do a spline through points. Same thing. So we get our line now that goes across, right? And I'll just continue that same logic the whole way around. I'll select the midpoint, hold down control, and select the opposite vertex. All right. So you should get these kind of crisscrossing lines across that top face of the panel. And they should all intersect at the uh, the centroid of our geometry here. Everybody got that? What's up? Oh. <laughs> the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to make each one of these into reference lines. So this is kind of a repetitive process, but you'll see where we're going with this. So we're going to just click on each one of these, or you can hold Control and select multiple or whatever you want to do. And I'm just going to make each one of these little crisscrossing lines that we've created into reference lines as well. <clears throat> All right. So now we've got that. We're going to place another series of points on each one of these reference lines. And we're just going to place one point on each of those reference lines. So place it, place it somewhere near the vertexes, right? So here's the vertex. I'm just going to place it, you know, most of the way to the vertex along the line. Okay, so now we're going to look at another, another aspect of the point geometry, which is the normalized curve parameter, right? So I'm going to click on one of these points, and you'll see that um, in the properties window, there's this value called norm normalized curve parameter. And in this case, it's set to 0 0.2, right? So 0 0.2 means that this is 20% of the way along the curve. You guys probably saw this in the other video. I click on the other one. This one says it's 0.8% of the way, or 0.8, 80% um, of the way along the curve. So and this one is also saying it's 80% of the way along the curve. So really, this one's kind of causing me some trouble because if I want to use the same value to set all three of these, and I want them to be near, and I want them to be near those vertexes, I'm going to have to change the way this one references. So if I click on this point that was at 0.2 when the other ones were at 0.8, I can change where it measures from, and I can say that I want this one to measure from the end. And this basically just flips the reference on the curve, and you'll see now that it says 0.78, right? So as long as these are roughly all the same, we should see that this is 0.8. You know, this one's 0.8 roughly, 0.8 roughly. All right, once we've got that and we've flipped any curves that need to be flipped, we can create a new parameter to set the value of these to something that we want it to be, right? <clears throat> Does everybody have those? Okay, so I'm going to go back to that family types window in the top left, family types, and we're going to create a new parameter. We're going to call this parameter, I usually just call it NCP, and I'm going to make this one an instance because we might want every one of our panels to have a different size opening, which is what we're going to generate with these points. So I'm going to say this one's going to be an instance, and I'll set its um, type to just a number because we want it to be that normalized curve parameter, and that's just a number value. It's not a length or anything. So we'll say number, and we'll say OK. So now we have this new variable or this new parameter, NCP. And I'm going to set it to point, I don't know, I'll say point 0.7 so that they move a little bit. And I'll say apply. Okay. Should we kind of keep people yeah. where they're not, it's not grabbing a midpoint. It'll place the point once you make it a reference okay. line. If, you may want to 
Okay, so you guys, if you're having a hard time getting that midpoint to snap to where you need it to, you can use this same normalized curve parameter value and you can place it anywhere on that line and then set its normalized curve parameter to 0.5 or 50% of the way along the curve, right? So if you're having an issue with snapping to that, that's a good way to fix it. Yeah, let me pause this. So let's finish up this process by going through and we're going to select each of our points here that should already be set, should already have a normalized curve parameter somewhere around, you know, the same thing, 0.8 or whatever. So we're going to go back and we're going to say normalized curve parameter. We're just going to click on that associate parameter box that's next to the parameter we want and we're going to click our NCP that we created, say OK, and you should see it move slightly. And they should be all still more or less towards the towards those vertexes. All right. So if you have one that's not towards a vertex, try doing that um, measure from and change the measure from on it. You have to click them one at a time to do that. <coughs> OK. So you've got those three now. Now we're just going to do that same process one more time. We're going to go through control click, control click, and make a triangle the whole way around with our spline through points. This is the, the last time we'll be doing this. So we'll click, click, spline. And then once you have that final triangle, final smaller triangle up there, you can just make it a reference line as well. All right. So now, now we have the full set of profiles. We have the full framework that we're going to create our geometry based off of here. <clears throat> okay, you should see if you grab one of your original adaptive points at the bottom, when you pull that, you should see it always stretch. That geometry should stretch to wherever you've moved it, all right? <clears throat> okay, so let's start, let's start making the actual like geometry here. Now we have our sort of scaffolding. We have our, all of our reference lines to build our geometry. I'm just gonna go ahead and tab through and select two of the lines that are on the same side of the triangle but on the two different levels right we have our smaller profile at the top that's inset and then we have our larger profile at the bottom so i'm going to select i'm just going to tab through and select two of them that are on the same side here see that smaller edge of, of the, or the top edge of the smaller triangle there and the same edge on the bigger triangle on the bottom and we'll just say create form when we say create form, a couple of different options come up at the bottom of the screen here. If you can't see them, another way to toggle through is to press the space bar. And you can toggle through the one you want. And we just want this one that creates this trapezoid shape, just the flat, the planar trapezoid shape. And then I'll say enter. And you'll see that that's created this little edge here. And I'll go around and do the same thing on either side. I'll select that one. I will tab and I'll control click select the second go the whole way around here oh did I Select There we go. All right. So you should end up with this sort of pyramid shape with the top chopped off, right? But the cool thing about this is that now that we have these parameters, we can still control this geometry with those parameters. We can go back to our family type parameters. Oh, I'll go ahead and save this project. We can go back to our family type parameters 
and we can change these and see how it affects our geometry, right? So I might go back here and I'll just make this back to 10 feet, say apply, and you'll see that that shrinks there. And then we can go back and set this normalized curve parameter. I wouldn't set it below anything, anything below 0.5 because anything below 0.5 might cause it to crisscross. So we want it to be 0.5 to 1, but, um, and we could set up a formula to limit this, but we're just going to keep it as it is. And I'll say, um, I'll say 0.6 on this just to watch it change a little bit. Whoops, 0.6. I'll say apply, and you'll see that, that that opening, that sort of Oculus piece has gotten smaller. So I'm going to add one more parameter to this, um, and that's going to be a material parameter. And I'm just going to turn that little opening into a glass panel, right? So I'll say new parameter here under the family types or in the family types window. And I'll just call it, I'll just call it glass. And it's going to be a type parameter since they're all going to be glass. The type of material is, or type of uh, parameter is going to be material. We'll say, okay. And so now I have a materials and finishes parameter. And I can hit this little drop down on the right corner of the by category where it says set the value. And I can select glass and say, okay. Apply. Okay. And now that's not associated with anything yet. So what I'll do is I'll create a little panel for it to be associated with. I'll just click on this top profile and I should get all three sides. If not, I can tab through and then we can say create form with it. Create form. I'll just make it flat. It's planar for this example. I'll go back and click on the actual form I've created. And then in its properties window, we can set its material parameter to glass, which is our saved parameter value. All right. So does everybody have a little panel here with a piece of glass in it? Sweet. All right. So one last thing I want to show you guys before we move into the different ways to apply this to an actual mass is the way that we can do a sweep with a geometry. Okay. So we've got, um, we've still got our reference lines under this and you, you can kind of see them flash if you start to select them or if you start to hover over them. The next thing I want to do is I want to place, I want to place sort of a mullion around this geometry, right? So I'm going to click on place a point and I want to tab through, oh, might not want me to do it. Here we go. Should be able to tab through and place a point on that original reference line. Oh, it doesn't look like, to me it looks like this one placed it on the, uh, here. I'm actually going to delete one of my sides here because I'm having a hard time selecting from this reference line. You may be able to just tab through it, but it didn't seem like it was working well for me. So I'll recreate that side in a minute. But I'm going to delete one of those sides and I'm going to place a point anywhere on this curve. Right? Anywhere on that base plane curve. <clears throat> just one of these bottom profile curves. I'll say it one more time. If, if you're having a hard time tabbing through to actually place the point on the reference line, you may have to delete temporarily one of the faces of your panel. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to say set reference plane, and I'm going to set it to that plane that's associated with that point, which is perpendicular to the reference line. And I'm going to go ahead and make a... Um, I'm going to make a little profile here. And one of the important things here is that this profile is going inward or it's going towards, towards the center of the panel, right? I'm dragging down and towards the center of the panel, not outwards away from the panel, but down towards the center of the panel. And we want to make this fairly small because really our panel here is way oversized. So I'm just going to make it, uh, I'll make it one foot by six inches. These are going to have to be fairly large panels. And really we could, um, and so that's just creating a profile here. And really we could control the size of this with a set of parameters if we want to, but for the sake of time, we won't. I'll just show really quick how you might do that. So if we click on it, uh, we could actually set a series of, you guys don't have to do this, but just take a look at how it's done. So you can take, you can go ahead and draw 
a series of um, values on there and then we can set we can set those to a label which would be one of our values right so if you wanted to make that profile um, adaptive as well or you wanted to be able to set the value the depth of that curtain pan or that uh, of that mullion then you could create a parameter for that and set it just doing this set it this way but we're just going to leave it at a set one for now for the sake of time I'm going to turn that little profile that I've created that rectangle into a reference line so go ahead and say is reference line and you'll see that we get the green outline and then this part's really easy. We're just going to select our full profile on the bottom of our triangle, our panel, and then I'm going to hold down control and click our little rectangular profile, and we'll say create form. And you should see that it has created then this full, this full uh, profile form around the bottom of our panel. So this is basically going to act as our mullion, right? <clears throat> All right. So if you got that, I'm just going to go ahead and tab back through and create my um, create my side panel that I deleted before go back and say create form select the planar form all right cool guys so now now we should have a full panel the glass piece and a mullion um, geometry around its perimeter <clears throat> so I'm going to save this and I'm going to go to, um, there's a couple ways. Well, we can just say, we can just say new. Once we finish that up, we can say new family. Make sure you save this one. So just say new family. And we'll go in the conceptual mass folder and just select the mass. So now we're going to create a mass to apply this panel to. <clears throat> all right i'll give everybody a second to kind of get caught up on that all right so we just created a little mass here by using the rectangle tool doing a create form and then extruding it and twisting the top face with the rotate tool <clears throat> all right so now what we want to do is we want to take these take one of these surfaces so i'm just going to tab through till it selects the actual surface here for us I'm going to click on it and I'm going to say divide surface and you should see it under the modify form tab and sort towards the right side here and I'll say divide surface all right so we should get kind of a rectangular pattern by default here but it says no pattern but sort of a rectangular pattern right so if we come over here to the properties tab when our it should be selected by default but if not you can select the, uh, the curtain panel there or the divided surface you come over to the properties tab and hit the drop down here for the different family types what we want to select is one of the triangle patterns so there's the checkerboard ones that have the missing tiles in between this is really good for something like if you're doing structural um, elements where you wouldn't want mullions or columns overlapping because I mean if you think about making a triangular set of columns they would overlap if you put them in every triangle but if you put them in every other triangle they won't overlap right so that's really useful for stuff like that but for us we're gonna go ahead and we'll go with this triangle flat pattern you can see that it applies it to the whole surface here right so already we've got kind of an interesting little facade going on here but let's look at how we can start to apply our geometry we've created here to um, to this surface so if we hit um, let's see okay hold on a second so the first thing we want to hit is we want to change it over to the surface representation here right so once we have it selected you'll see in the top right you have the surface representation icon and we can click on we want the surface to be showing we can turn off the pattern so hey, whoops, sorry, we just want the surface one selected. And then once we do that, it allows us to then go into our little drop down here in the bottom right corner of that tab, that surface representation tab, there's that little arrow that you can hit. And once you're in that, you can come over here and click on the nodes icon here. And I will uncheck the UV grid and intersect lines. <clears throat>
All right, we got that. So we'll say OK. We'll just have the node showing here. <clears throat> um, let's see, we can, I want to see if there's a better one to work, do this with. Should be one where it's kind of cut across. Uh, not what I'm thinking of. All right, we'll stick with the triangle flat. All right, so I want to show you guys a couple of different ways to apply these panels. The first one is just going to be um, through what's called a, a repeat process. So we'll go, we'll go back now. I'm going to go up to the top here, and I'm going to switch over back to our tri panel adaptive or whatever you saved it as, right? And I want to load this into project. Once we're back in there, we can say load into project. And I can actually select then a series. I'll choose these top three panels, or these top three points, and then I'll just press escape. And you should see that once we've selected those, those top three there, it's placed an instance of our panel that we've created in that location. So we have one of our little panels there. All right. So now we can go through and we can um, we can repeat that process. So I'm going to click on that panel then. And if you come up here, it's kind of hidden up here, but you see this repeat icon. So select your panel and then hit this repeat icon. And it should populate your entire wall there with those with those panels. All right. Yep. The repeat icon is right here, right where my mouse is here. Okay, so the way this repeat option works is it's going to take whatever logic you took and just propagate it across the entire surface until it runs out of items to do it with, right? But um, the thing that you want to pay attention to is, you know, obviously here there we have a gap between a lot of our panels, right? So if we want to fill in that gap, we're going to have to go through and create a another instance of that object, right, or instance of our panel. So I'll go back to create and say component. <clears throat> now, now I'm going to do one that's kind of these in-between points. I want to make sure I get actually I'm, that I'm clicking on those, uh, those blue points, those nodes of the surface here. And I'm going to place another one in that gap in between. And then I'll just say repeat again. So this is one way to do it. This is not necessarily the most efficient way right? Because I've got to go through essentially in this case with this pattern, I've got to go through and essentially place four different versions of this upside down, right side up, and each row to fill out this entire surface. But the thing, the thing that's really useful now, guys, is that we can click on them and we can go back over to this edit type in the properties and we can change the values of some of our parameters here. So our 10, our, our type parameters are gonna show up here. Anything that we had set as a type, right? And so our offset we had as a type and right now mine are sticking out a little too far. So I'm gonna make it down, drop it down to two feet of offset hit apply and okay. It's probably gonna take a second to crunch because it's gotta go through every one of the panels in the project and adjust the size. So once that's done, we should see that we have, um, we have those adjusted, right? We have a little bit more reasonable panels now. <clears throat> All right, so now if you like, you can go through and, you can go through and 
um, create another version. So I'll just pause this. I'm here. Okay, so just to show you guys one more way to do this, if I go through, you guys don't necessarily have to follow along here, you can just kind of take a look. So we can go through and do the same thing, whoops, I need to select one of these faces. So I'm going to select the face of the form, hit divide surface, I'm going to select the pattern I want, I'll just do, I'll go back to our triangle flat, same thing we did before. All right, so I've got a triangle flat. What we can actually do if we'd like is we can go in here and say um, new, not project, new family, and I'll say curtain panel pattern base this time. And I'll say okay. And then we can actually select this little grid that pops up and we can change its uh, type, and you'll see that these are the same ones as our original curtain panels we saw when we did our divide surface, right? So we can select the one that we're, we plan to use in our project. In this case, we're using triangle flat, and you'll see that it creates sort of our basic adaptive, our generic model adaptive, but hosted to this grid that it's already created for us, right? So once we've done that, just to show you guys how this works, I'm just gonna hit create form here that form right and then I will um, we can do whatever we like with this but uh, let's see maybe we can do a scale well let's just leave it as is I'm just gonna show you guys the process of loading this in but essentially you could create that exact same panel we just made but on this pattern pattern based version right Work, it will work exactly the same way. It kind of just does the first couple steps for you. So I'm just going to load this in the project and I'm going to load it into my mass. Right? So now if we click back on our divided surface, we can hit over here on the properties. You'll see that if I scroll down a little bit, our new one we just created popped in there underneath the other, um, the other tri triangle flat version, right? So if I click on our new one, It'll take a second and it'll crunch and then it'll populate that surface with our new pattern-based version. And our pattern-based version does a pretty good job of filling in the entire surface for us. So if we had, you know, for example, these could be like, um, I don't know, a precast panel or something like that. If we wanted to populate that entire surface with a series of precast triangular panels for our facade, that's a really quick way to do it. We don't need any kind of dynamo or anything like that. But we don't have a lot of individual control right now because we haven't created any new properties for it. We haven't gone through and built that full scaffolding. So just to kind of summarize, this is a really great quick way to apply a lot of uh, geometry to the surface um, if you're working entirely in Revit. If you're working in Dynamo, I find that it's, it's most useful instead of going with the pattern-based panel to go with the generic panel that way you can use a list of points to apply it. You can divide your surface with lunchbox or however you like, and then you can apply those each one of those panels based off a list of points that corresponds with it, right? Three points in this case. Lists with sublists of three points would create a whole series of these panels. So that's pretty much it for today, guys. If you guys have any other